This is how to play Coup. Coup is a tabletop game using cards and coins. It's made for two to six players, ages 14 and up, and every game runs 10 to 15 minutes long. There are five types of characters in this game, and each one has special abilities. But you don't have to memorize them because every player gets a cheat card that looks like this. We'll talk more about the abilities in a minute, but first, let's look at the setup of the game. Each player receives two random character cards, which they're allowed to look at, but they keep face down on the table so the other players can't see them. These cards represent the player's lives, or in this game it's called influence. And the goal of the game is to be the last player left with influence. Each player begins the game with two coins, and the rest of the coins go off to the side in the treasury. Each player gets one action per turn, and they can choose from these seven possible actions. A player is not allowed to pass. Income, or taking one coin from the treasury, is a safe action because no other player can block it from happening. If a player takes foreign aid, they get two coins from the treasury. However, another player might block that action. We'll talk more about blocking in a minute. In this case, the player cannot choose to coup as an action because they don't have seven or more coins. However, if the player did have enough coins, they could choose to spend seven of them to coup, which means they can select any other player to lose one influence or one life. This action cannot be blocked. The other player must choose one of their cards and flip it face up on the table. This card is no longer in play. If a player has 10 or more coins at the start of their turn, they must coup as their action. For any of the other actions to be used, the player must claim to have the character associated with that action face down. Bluffing is a big part of this game, so it's fine to claim to have a character that you don't have and then later change who you claim to have. But be careful, don't get caught in a lie. If you do, you'll lose one influence. So as their action, the player might say, I'm going to use my duke to tax, and then take three coins from the treasury. As long as a player has three or more coins, they can choose to say they have the assassin, and that they're going to assassinate another player, making that player lose one influence. Unlike a coup, an assassination can be blocked. Another action is to claim to have the ambassador in exchange with the deck. In this case, the player would draw two random cards off the top of the deck and add them to his hand. Then he would discard any two cards from his hand. If the player claims to have a captain, they can steal two coins from any other player. This action can be blocked. Now let's look at each character's abilities. In addition to being able to steal two coins from any other player, the captain can also stop other players from stealing coins from them. The assassin allows the player to remove one influence from any other player by paying three coins. In addition to allowing the player to exchange cards at the deck, the ambassador also blocks stealing. The duke allows a player to take three coins from the treasury, but it also allows that player to block another player from taking foreign aid. The contessa allows a player to block an assassination from happening to them. It's important to remember that there are three of each of the character cards in the deck for a total of 15 cards. That'll help you deduce when someone might be lying later. Here's an example of how a game could go. Player 1 announces that he's going to take three coins from the treasury using his duke. He pauses for a second to see if anybody's going to challenge. If nobody challenges, then he takes the three coins, regardless of whether he had a duke or not. Now it's player 2's turn. He announces he's going to take one coin from the treasury using income. This cannot be challenged. Now it's player 3's turn. He declares that he's going to use his captain to steal two coins from player 2. Player 2 has some options now. He can either hand over the two coins, or he can declare that he has a captain himself or an ambassador. In that case, he's going to block the stealing. If that had happened, then player 3 would either not get the coins or would challenge player 2 that he doesn't believe he has a captain or an ambassador. Although player 1 has nothing to do with this interaction, he can also jump in at any time and accuse somebody of lying. In this case, we'll say that player 2 challenges player 3 and thinks he does not have a captain. Player 3 now has to flip up one of his cards. If it's not a captain, he loses that influence and that card stays face up and is out of play. If it is a captain, then player 2 has to flip up one of his cards and lose that influence. Player 3 would then shuffle his captain back into the deck and replace it with a random card face down because he did not lose any influence this turn. Player 1 announces he's using his duke again and it goes unchallenged, so he takes 3 coins from the treasury. Now player 2 announces that he's using his ambassador to switch with the deck, but player 3 challenges him, so he has to flip up his card. 
If it happens to not be an ambassador, he would lose that influence and be out of the game. If he had had the ambassador, then player three would lose one influence. This continues until every player except for one is eliminated, and the remaining player wins the game. And that's how to play coup.